Okay, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 25. We're going to read verses 33 to 40 and talk uh, very fast here about the uh, candlestick, the menorah. I'm going to finish what we started yesterday morning. Here we go. Three cups shall be shaped like almond blossoms on the one branch, a bulb and a flower, and three cups shaped like an almond blossoms on the other branch, a bulb and a flower. So for six branches going out from the lampstand. And in the lampstand, four cups shaped like almond blossoms, its bulbs and its flowers. A bulb shall be under the first pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb under the second pair of branches coming out of it, and a bulb coming under the third pair of branches out of it for the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their bulbs and their branches shall be of one piece with it. All of it shall be of one piece of hammered work of pure gold. Then you shall make its lamps seven in number, and they shall mount its lamps so as to shed light on the space in front of it. Its snuffers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold with all these utensils. See that you make them after the pattern for them, which was shown to you on the mountain. So finishing where we started yesterday, uh, this shape. Now, another thing is that uh, when you see the, what did this look like exactly? Were the candle, uh, uh, were the branches coming out? Were they all coming out straight at the top? Were they coming down at sort of an angle? We have a representation of the candlestick, you know, that you see historically on that relief uh, from a, a conquest, but that's not necessarily the way it was here. We're not really told. So we're not absolutely certain of the shape, but we are given some of the details here. Now we do know that the, the crafter that made this, he knew how to make it and he made it in a satisfactory way. Remember, Moses was shown the blueprint in the mountain, but uh, he also perhaps elaborated, he wasn't perhaps given exact measurements, you know, how many millimeters, how many centimeters, how many inches, uh, but when he would talk to the person who crafted the candlestick, he could have told him it needs to be exactly this way. So some of this may have been orally given, some of the exact precise details that we're not actually given here. Same for like the feet on the ark and the feet on the table and so on. We're not given ex explicit, absolute, exact pieces on that. So some of this could have been described by Moses more precisely to the craftsman who made the stuff. Didn't have to be put in absolute millimeters, you know, right here in the scripture. Something interesting to think of. So that could mean that the description given here is more of a summation, uh, whereas the more detailed came from Moses directly to the craftsman. I wanted to share a statement here also from one of the commentaries. Uh, Stuart 577, once, once the tabernacle and its furnishings were actually built and set in place, the average worshiper did indeed get to see such things as the lampstand and therefore could become quite familiar with their appearance because the doorway tent curtains were to be pulled back during the daytime and anyone could peer in from the courtyard into the outer room of the tabernacle. I thought that was an interesting piece that although only the priests get to actually enter the holy place, uh, the the cov curtains are pulled back so that even the common worshiper who comes and brings his lamb or his offering, he could actually, and probably would, don't you, if you was you, wouldn't you? Uh, he would kind of look around there and, and make sure he could see, uh, he wanted to see in there just to see it because that's that's the, that's God's house and, and God is my God and I'm, I'm part, I'm with him. So we could actually see into the sanctuary, uh, but we couldn't enter it, only the priest could enter and we'll talk more about that further on in the book. And one more thought here on the candlestick, uh, the lampstand with the seven, uh, seven lamps on it. No family would have used uh, the oil, would take a lot, of, uh, a lot of wealth, a lot of oil to run, you know, burn seven lamps all night long. But in the sanctuary, they burn all night long, seven lamps. So this would have been the brightest thing in the camp. And, uh, you know, when you go on a trip, did you ever put a timer on your lights or something to have your lights come on at a certain time and kind of make so that to help prevent theft, you know, people would go by your house and not see all the lights are dark. They'd see the lights on at the normal time and think, oh, yeah, somebody's home. I can't break in there. But here God's got the lights on and the lights sort of indicate somebody's home, somebody's present. And so, yes, any, anybody in the camp could sort of walk between the tents and look around and look over and see the brightest spot in the camp was there looking out uh, at the tabernacle. God is home. He's got his lights on. God is with us.